Chapter One. I kissed a boy on the cheek, and it got me grounded for the whole summer. A measly, meaningless cheek kiss. Mom freaked. Ian bolted without saying bye. Mom yelled for an eternity, then stormed back inside, leaving me fully clothed, bra unhooked, feet dangling in the pool. It sucks that she came home from work an hour earlier than usual. But at least she wasn't two hours earlier, when Ian and me were in the pool, doing way more than cheek kissing. I know he's the one for me, but she doesn't see it that way. She freaks about the stupidest things sometimes, but she always says I've lost her trust, so my bad. It wasn't the kiss that pissed her off. It's probably the fact that she banned Ian from our house two months ago when he was thrown into juvie for selling weed. I never smoked it with him, so it's not really a big deal. And then last week she banned me from seeing him when she caught us skipping school together. In my bed. Anyhow, the details don't matter anymore because she finally had enough of my being a normal teenager and she's decided to take away my life. I mean my cell phone. Same thing. At least it's Friday. My flat iron hisses as I rake it through my hair until I hear mom's bedroom TV turn off around 10.30, as it always does. I finish my hair, throw on some makeup with extra sparkly eyeliner, and call Becca. She isn't my first friend of choice, but she has a car and is a total pushover. I need a ride to the senior's party, I say, and I'm thinking you could totally use a passenger. Bailey, she groans. It's obvious she's annoyed with me, but she'll get over it, because without me, she wouldn't be invited to a party this big. Your house is 20 minutes out of the way. If I take you home too, I'll have to leave 40 minutes before my curfew. Just get me, please. My knuckles are white on the clear plastic corded phone. I haven't used this thing in forever. No one uses house phones anymore. Silence on the other end. I'm sorry. I say with sincerity, just please come get me. I'll find another ride home. Fine, she says, ending the call. An unearthly wave of heat rests over the town as I wait on the front porch for her to arrive. The humidity will ruin my hair if she makes me wait another five minutes. Two minutes later, she pulls into the driveway, headlights on. What an idiot. I run to her car and swing open the passenger door. Turn off the lights, I hiss. She fumbles on the dashboard, feeling for the switch. She's only been driving two months and she's not nearly as skilled as I am in the art of being stealthy and sneaking out. Becca's just not the kind of person who sneaks out. She's not like me. I should forgive her slip-ups and not scream since she did go out of her way to give me a ride. But then the front door swings open with a violent swoosh, and now I know I won't ever forgive her because I've just been caught.